The serial substring lets you extract a sequence of characters from an existing string by specifying start and end points or start and end characters. The substring uses the speed key sub dollar sign and can be found by expanding the serial folder under logic symbols and then clicking and dragging the serial substring over to the detail view. So the pattern with serial symbols so far has been to have a really small symbol that does deceptively complex tasks. A piece of whatever string appears in the substring's input line will also appear on its output line, and the two parameters specify how that piece will be removed from the input string. So the start position character allows you to specify either a starting position or a character within the string. And the length slash end character lets you pick the length of the extracted string or the final character. So for instance, if you want the output string to start at the input string's first character, you would put a one decimal in the first parameter. And if you wanted to start with the fifth character, you would use 5D. But what's neat is you can also start at the far right of the string by putting a 0D inside the first parameter. To use a character as a starting position, you specify the occurrence of the character you want, then the hex value of the character that you're looking for. Then you just smash those two numbers together, add an H on the end, and there you go. If you wanted to start at the first occurrence of a space character, your start parameter would be 0120H. And if you wanted to start at the 15th occurrence of a lowercase a, your start parameter would be 0F61H. 0F being the 15th occurrence, and 61 being the hexadecimal equivalent of the lowercase letter a. In the second parameter, you either specify the length of the string that you want to extract as a decimal, or you can specify the ending character. The ending character is denoted the same way as it is in the starting character. But keep in mind that the symbol only looks for the characters that come after the start character. Also note that if you specify a character in either of the parameters, those characters will not be included in the output. So everything between the two characters that you specify will show up on the output. Let's build an example program and that'll help demonstrate some of the more complex parts. I'm going to add a serial send, two more serial substrings, and then three analog one-shots. The send will have its input driven by the X panel, and its parameter will be all my X's live in Texas. The send's output will go back to the X panel, as well as each input of the serial substrings. With the first substring, we're going to extract the word Texas exclamation point from the string using 0D and 0120H as the parameters. So we're starting at the end of the string, and then we're going to the first occurrence of a space after the last character in the string. And the second substring is going to take everything up to the third lowercase l character. So its parameters will be one decimal and three decimal, three being the length of the string that we want to get out. And the third substring will extract everything between the first lowercase x and the second lowercase e. So its parameters are 0178h and 0265h. All of the outputs of the substrings will go to the X panel, as well as the analog one-shots. These will let us know if a new string is propagated to the output of the serial substring when the input is resent. The one-shots are all going to have a half-second pulse time, and their output will be displayed on the X panel. So that's it. Let's compile and then upload to our processor. So everything is blank at startup, which is perfectly normal. And when we hit the one and only button, we see the one shots go off, we see the big string gets sent, and then the substrings do their parsing. So the first substring started at the very last character, which was the exclamation point, and we told it to look for the first occurrence of a space after that character. And you might be thinking, well that string should have my exes live in Texas in it, because the first space character occurs after the word all. So what happened? Well, the symbol took the first occurrence of a space after the starting point. And since we started at the end of the string, instead of going from left to right, the substring went from right to left. So the first space occurs just before Texas. And then the second substring started at the very first character and then looked for a length of three. 
So it started at the very first character in the string and then just pulled out something that had three characters in it. So we get all in the second substring's output. And then the third substring started at the first occurrence, first occurrence of an X, which would be here, and stopped at the second occurrence of a lowercase e. So this is our first starting character, the X, and then we look for the second E to come after that, which is one and two. And the resulting string is all of the characters that fall in between the start and end characters. So there's no X and there's no E, which means we get ES space LIV. So it's worth paying attention that the substring only removes the characters that are specified in the start and end points. And there is no doubt that you will end up working with the serial substring on an ultra-regular basis. People use it to parse data from TCP ports, serial streams, files on the processor, table entries, and the list goes on and on and on. Just recently, actually, I've used it to pull program information from a processor. When you send a console command to a processor, the information you get back can be really verbose, and usually it's tough to latch on to the crucial bit that you're trying to isolate. But combining several of the serial signals let me chisel down into that reply data, and then the substring helped discard the extraneous data in the string that actually contained the program name. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have time for today. If you really liked what you saw, give us a like down below, and if you really loved it, be sure to subscribe. But until next time, this has been Jonathan, and I'm out. I'll see you later.